Scary good. Greetings from a very snowy yet still loud New York City. That's actual live video behind me of what would normally be the Empire State Building, and I guess it's in there somewhere if you squint hard. So today, I, your old pal Bigfoot, have some happy news. For the past few years, whenever we've heard that there was a new YouTube policy change, we creators braced ourselves for impact. There hasn't been a change on the internet in general that's been positive for creators since 2016 or before, but I think that might have just changed. I can't be certain, because I'm so paranoid and cynical about the behavior of any large company by this point that I still am looking for the dark underside of this new policy change. Actually, it's a number of changes, but as far as I can tell at first glance, it seems as though all of it is geared toward greater clarity and less harsh, more fair punishments when violations occur. The main change is this. Instead of giving you a community guideline strike and immediately crippling your channel with no warning, then only vaguely explaining why this has occurred, which has been the policy, YouTube says that now they will contact you and notify you that you have violated the guidelines without punishing you. The one video in question might be removed or blocked in some way, but they will even explain how you can appeal their decision if you think it was made in error. Furthermore, they say they will provide clear information as to what content or thumbnails or behavior violates the guidelines and how you can take steps to make sure your channel complies with the rules. This is a huge cultural change on YouTube. This means that at least for those not doing edgy or political shows, it's a lot less frightening to think of using YouTube as part of your entertainment brand. I've deleted literally over 100 videos in the past year because I wasn't sure what YouTube's guidelines were about the subject called duplication that was being used to take down a number of channels far more popular than mine. The channels themselves didn't know what they had done wrong or how to fix things. It was terrifying for a lot of us. It harshly affected our work, our revenue, and our traffic. I'm still shell-shocked from it. I hope that period officially ends now, but the scars will take a while to heal. Still, I'm not complaining. I'm very grateful to YouTube and I think they're doing the right thing. I don't suppose that the fact that TikTok is now already more popular than Facebook had anything to do with this. Speaking of which, have you checked out our new baby TikTok account? We've been using all the cartoon characters from this channel on TikTok in little 15 second cartoons. We only have two that have gotten over a thousand views as I'm saying this, and both of them star Peter Lorre. When we do Peter Lorre cartoons here on YouTube, we're lucky if we get 50 views, but they seem to like him better on TikTok. Actually, that's not always true. I see one of them here on TikTok only has 50 views. Our page has some videos with 2K views and some videos with like 7 or 8 views total. We don't have many followers there yet, so we only get views when TikTok decides to put us on the For You page. If you'd like, please friend us over there. We friend everyone back on TikTok. At any rate, I feel like today is day one for rebuilding this channel. I feel like, or at least I hope, that the bombing is done and we can start to repair the infrastructure and hire new doctors for the hospitals and all that sort of thing. It seems like maybe the war on creators is finally over. We've already rebranded as Scary Good, and that's our name on TikTok, so we're going to stay Scary Good. I'd like to move toward more animated horror comedy stuff and music on both channels, so now I feel I can relax and just focus on being creative and having fun instead of worrying I might get deleted with no warning over something I didn't even know I was doing wrong. I can't overemphasize what a relief it is to have that particular sword undangled from above my creative throat here on YouTube. I just wonder though, what about the channels that were demonetized in the past couple of years without warning? Will any of them get a reprieve? Will the governor stay any of their executions? Will they get a second chance is what I'm asking. 
I would love to see channels restored and given a chance to comply to YouTube's guidelines. I would also love to see a video from YouTube explaining the duplication situation more clearly. It's been rumored to be about looping videos and or using public domain material without changing it significantly and or reading stories already on other channels and or a few other things as well. Maybe it's all those things at once. I don't really know. I really do want to know though. The two videos YouTube put out yesterday explaining the new policy changes were the best and easiest to parse videos they've ever put out in my memory. I love this new approach, I love the new transparency, and I'm incredibly grateful. So today, or really February 25th when all this goes into effect, is sort of day one for the new YouTube. I'm looking at this as a brand new start. I'm just going to forget everything that happened and act like this is our first day on YouTube. Maybe, in a sense, it actually really sort of is. I hear... There's a celebrity with the initials G.G. appearing at the next Northeast Comic Con. Is it Gina Gershon? What? No. Is it Greg Grumberg? Greg which? Greta Garbo? Scary story.